Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome to a special edition of Eve Talk. Um, this Eve Talk, I'm adding it for a couple of reasons. The main one is because the market window has changed and so I'm going to run it through its paces in a very short episode. Uh, I would love to have your feedback. We'll try to find the best uh, settings uh, for doing Eve Talk with the new market window. Uh, a second reason is that with the announcement of the uh, Ascension expansion pack on November 8, uh, there could be some interesting things happening in the market. And the final reason is because um, if I sound a little weird or if I start to sniffle or stuff like that, I actually caught a pretty bad cold. I don't have a super amount of energy and uh, so uh, this is going to be like a, a quick fix, but I think it could be pretty interesting. Uh, especially on the technical aspect of the new regional market window. So let, let's open this one up and uh, let's start with an interesting one uh, that could be Plex, of course. Here is the chart and let's take a look at, uh, uh, the, at the new window, basically. So you saw the, the new animation. Uh, a possibility for me is to turn that one off um, somewhere. Let's take a look. Not here, here maybe. Show volume, show animation. So I could take that one out. We're going to go through the whole Plex thing uh, with the animation. Then we'll do a segment without it. Let me know which one you prefer. Uh, on the Plex front, we're still going up a little bit. Uh, the one other difference between the, this and the previous Eve talks is that this, um, uh, this band here, which uh, you can increase to, to select six months, which we usually uh, use for Eve talk, uh, it constantly resets back to one month uh, or around one month when it comes to, uh, yeah, to logging back into the game. Uh, so unless you guys know of a way for me to basically set the six months as a standard, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. I would prefer that. Uh, on the other hand, of course, you do have a full view of a one year price range uh, in the bottom band. So you can always have a little bit of an idea. And basically on the one month period, you can, uh, you can try to take a look at um, at the details of what's been happening in the last few days and weeks. Uh, so slow increase over one month for Plex. Well, slow, it's actually been a pretty decent increase. It just doesn't look as uh, steep as on the previous chart over six months. If we take that, you can see that uh, it looks quite a, a bit more steep, but we're hesitating at the end at the around 1.14 billion uh, on, on the chart here. Uh, so stuff that I like here, the medium price, uh, which doesn't jump up anymore. It used to do that when I was checking it on release dates. Um, so median daily price, you can now just hover over that and you can see 1.14 billion, 1.14, 1.13, back up. And here, 1.15 billion, pretty good day, uh, which is six days ago for, for Plexus. You can also easily see the volumes now, 1,670 orders uh, for 2,832 Plexus. Um, so this could be pretty damn interesting as well. And of course, here in the end, we can see that we are pretty much right back where we were a year ago. Um, and that here is the summer slump, the decrease in price for Plexus with, uh, if I take a look at the full year chart, we can see that the bottom was around June, July, something like that. You should have picked up some Plex for 900 million if you wanted to make the trade. Um, so yeah, Plex still going up slowly. Uh, first look here at the chart. Let's move to trading certificate. Here is the animation yet again. A bit of a steeper jump in one month for the trading certificate. Starts at 1.05 billion. Ends at just below 1.14 billion though. That's exactly the same as Plexus. But here, for instance, we have a median daily price of 1.2 billion, uh, which was, of course, only for 14 orders and 16 sold pilot trading certificates. And again, you can see here on the chart that we're pretty much back where we were a year ago with the clear bottom uh, throughout the summer. Uh, Body risk up certificate could be interesting to see this also going up a little bit, very much in tandem with the pilot training certificate. Uh, you can see the abysmal volumes of this good though. We have to, this is going to be zero actually, because I can't, oh, or maybe not. Yeah, it's actually one. Uh, so we have days, oh, this could be zero because I'm not seeing anything. Um, so pretty interesting. Um, this is now going in lockstep, lockstep with Plexus and the training certificates, uh, despite the fact that if you look at the entire chart here, you can see that we come from, from an extremely high point about a year ago, which was uh, probably due to the introduction of the skill extractors and skill injectors. Um, there was extreme demand because people were being able to optimize their alts. Then we went back down with, uh, with some bottoms right here. 
um, which was well I will need to do it like that to see the month around January actually pretty low price again a bottom June July and now we've been going up since August uh, in price but we're still not at the price range we had around a year ago uh, for the body rescopes but that is of course due to the skill extractor skill injector anomaly and yeah it keeps resetting um, this is Oh, this is a, a one month chart. It looks bigger, but that's because the skill extractor has existed less than a year. Um, so what the way we used to have this in Eve Talk, if we had a good that was uh, not uh, out that long, we would actually just have a, a beginning part of the chart. Now we get a full chart. We can go up to the full, uh, the full history as well, up to a year, but uh, this is actually the introduction point and so uh, the standard setting here looks bigger but it's actually still uh, one month or 30 days skill injectors interestingly enough going up a little bit uh, if you expect alpha clones to use these skill injectors then i think you can expect increased demand with the ascension expansion so that is definitely a, a possible reason why uh, skill injectors are finally going back up because you can see here we had a serious slump which was not that long ago in september uh, we seriously slumped down in the price um, we actually had a pretty decent summer uh, for the skill injectors uh, but here we reached rock bottom uh, so it looked like skill injectors which is basically losing all their value despite the increase in price of plex during that period uh, they managed to go down to a, to a six month low or an all-time low even if you look at the entire chart uh, but now they've recovered a little bit they're still probably on the cheap side i don't think it's easy to make money on these skill injectors um, so <clears throat> there we go that's going to be uh, probably the standard setting if the animation doesn't bother you guys too much uh, so again let me know if there is a way to uh, set uh, like a six month period as standard but I think my expectation is that they're setting this to one month standard because they wanted the, the market window to be more responsive and of course if on any um, regular uh, opening of, of this um, price history chart everyone only uses one month of data they can probably increase performance that way so i suspect it's not exactly possible but we will see um, next up i'll do a, a bit of checking without the animation so we'll uh, delete the animation and then we'll do let's say some advanced pi which could definitely have been impacted by the announcement of the expansion pack so uh, manufacturing research materials uh, planetary materials advanced planetary materials which should be used in the um, in the new engineering complexes here we can see increase in price for the broadcast nodes uh, since about a week um, increased volumes as well quite substantial in fact 29,000 26,000 units 25,000 units that's quite a lot and we can of course see the price go up from 2.55 million to around 3.12 million sellers are at around 12 million the good news is that uh, the, the volumes are still coming in so availability of broadcast nodes looks pretty good and so this is now a check uh, on the normal settings without uh, the animation as you can see it's a little bit uh, more quick but maybe the animation uh, can be cool as well uh, again i don't have a personal preference i think i like both of them this is maybe the most efficient way to do it so if i would have have to choose myself considering that if talks in general are already around 50 minutes i would probably go without the animation uh, but if you guys actually prefer it I, I would be happy to leave it in because i tend to talk long enough over any segment here is the integrity response drone uh, in preparation of the announcement we actually had some big increases in volumes but now here we can see at the end also increased volumes and increased price going up in about two weeks from um oh, 2.93 million to 3.34 million on the median daily price that's actually pretty handy for me to check it this way i don't have to go all the way back here with my eyes uh, that's pretty cool next up here we get the nano factories again increased volumes increased price up to 1.68 million organic mortar applicators look at the volumes here um 35 000 units 27,000 units those are pretty big days and here we have 1.4 million with an average here of around maybe 1.25 or something like that so it's not as steep as with the citadel expansion itself but the impact is obviously here here are the computing modules uh, computing uh, modules were actually a bit of a bottleneck for me 
when I was uh, trying to gather all materials for these citadels. So I'm not surprised to see this much bigger jump up to 2.45 million uh, from 1.84 million on average uh, here in a few days. Luckily, we're recovering pretty quickly, which means that yeah, in the last few days, as you can see, there's a decent amount of them coming in as well. Uh, Self-harmonizing power core up as well. Look at the volumes here, 23,000 units. Sterile conduits are up quite substantially. Ooh, actually going in a straight line. Is availability a bit less of this one? Uh, it's coming in better, but oh, coming in yet up to 1.9 million. Uh, but uh, here, let's let's start at 1.4 million, bit of a bottom. And here, median daily price of 2.17 million, definitely up quite substantially. And Whitware mainframe, finally, very same pattern. Pretty interesting stuff, of course. Um, so I think I like this. One thing that is standard disabled. And next up, we're going to check out the fuels. But maybe I should. Uh, we're not going to do the show min max. I prefer the smoother chart. But the Donkin channel may be of interest. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, the Donkin channel is supposed to show volatility. Um, so unfortunately, I do tend to stick within... Uh, certain groups like minerals, take one ships, things like that. And so volatility should always be pretty much the same across all of them. Um, but uh, if we take a look at the fuels, let's go for these fuels here. Um, here is what it looks like with the Dorkian channel. I have to be honest, adding this background color doesn't feel that useful or that good to me. Uh, so basically the Dorkian channel takes the highest and the lowest price, probably keeps them for about a week or so maybe even longer than that and creates a range within which uh, has been traded uh, in the last period of time here for instance helium uh, fuel blocks actually not in price nor in volumes that substantially that's quite a surprise to me uh, i would expect with 20 blocks per hour for every service in one of the, uh, it's actually 15 net um, in one of these engineering complexes that demand for fuel may be going up quite substantially if you want to have the same level of service as what you get from like a medium pot you need a lot more fuel than previously so here are the hydrogen fuel blocks just basically uh, doing okay around 22.67 thousand is here it doesn't look like these are actually going crazy Oxygen fuel blocks here, you can see this is the Donkin channel basically showing uh, a much uh, wider trade range and thus in the oxygen fuel blocks we actually have a bit more volatility, uh, a range from 22,000 to 26,000 ISK, it's 4,000 around uh, probably 20-25%, that's actually not bad and this is maybe the advantage of the Donkin channel, unfortunately on very flat charts though I think it may bother a little bit, uh, so point number two do you want me to keep the Donkin channel or not for the regular EVE talks? Make sure to let me know. Uh, here again, nitrogen fuel blocks, a bit more volatility, especially on the downside here, heading as low as 22,000 is uh, currently back at pretty much its average of 23.5. Um, so not as much volatility as I expected and I can see both advantages and disadvantages of the Donkian channel. Uh, showing off more volatility, it's pretty damn obvious like this, uh, that you had a really good period of selling some oxygen fuel blocks, uh, which was around, well, two weeks ago or something like that. Uh, so that is maybe an advantage. Um, next up we've got, oh I wanted to take a look at the new charges of course, ammunition and charges, so obviously the chart is not going to show a lot, but uh, CCP also released the um, command burst charges or the blueprint originals of that, so we should be able to see some of these come to the market I think, let's take a look. Uh, price history not showing anything up, although there are some of them here. Maybe just no one is buying them or it's just too new. I'm suspecting it's just too new. So, okay, we don't have any actual market information for these. Uh, but uh, I just like to add it here that you can actually make these charges now uh, beforehand, which is, of course, uh, all about allowing NullSec to transition smoothly to the new boosting mechanic. And uh, maybe finally, let's, let's take a look at the minerals. It's just a, a regular... Uh, regular segment that I always do in Eve talk. It could be interesting from the perspective that A, with Ascension and the changes to the Rorcal, the Orca people are expecting them to uh, to be pr uh, much lower. I personally think that high sec minerals could do uh, okay. Uh, and two, of course, it's one of those segments that actually does have some uh, variety within it. So it could be good to take a look at these with the Duncan channel on. Um, just to, to get a feel of, of whether or not this would be a problem. We usually start here with Tritanium. Oh, this is 
definitely wrong. I'm not sure why uh, the Donkey channel may not show um, on only the, tr the range. So this is Jita range. Um, there may be something else at play here. So I'll be honest, I think we'll go for no Donkey channel because it's pretty obvious that something is wrong here. The trade range for Tritanium has not been between three and six isk uh, about a month ago. That That's just crazy. So yeah, let's let's take that one out because this is obviously wrong. That gives us this chart, which is nice and clean right in the middle. And we can see a slow increase in price uh, for Tritanium in the last month or, or so, starting at around 5 ISK, ending at around 6 ISK. Uh, but in general, pretty decently flat. We can also see, uh, it's, it's hard to see. Um, and I actually may need to increase that. Ah, that's a good one to, to have spotted right now. I should increase this so you can get the bottom of the chart here as well um, so here you can see that we had a pretty good period I'm actually going to do it like this and like this there we go a pretty good period here in April which was the war World War B uh, with some production and then to my surprise on increased volumes here we actually have a, a pretty bad bottom in June July and then the rough summer and now we're actually coming back a little bit so we're pretty much on average when it comes to tritanium next up we've got the pyrite chart here again uh, yeah we're, let's quickly add the Donkin channel this is a, a sort of a test video anyways so let's add the Donkin channel does it show it doesn't show anything too crazy still uh, a trade range of with a bottom at eight is not very accurate so I'm I'm just not liking it because of its inaccuracy uh, to be honest um, so here again from nine to nine is pretty flat overall trade range eight to nine and you can see that we are extremely low in price for pyrite. You can actually see that very nicely already without me having to uh, increase the range of the chart. If I need dates, then I just need to increase this. But if I don't need dates, I can just keep it on the one month length. And you can clearly see that we're in a pretty bad spot for pyrite at the moment. Uh, after that, we've got Mixalon. Uh, here you can see the very strong summer at 74 isk. And then over here, pretty much at an average actually a decent place for Mixalon with a current trade range of 67 isk then we get isogen um, i try to recover a little bit as you can see here uh, from a very deep bottom uh, throughout the summer but try to recover a little bit but we're already on our way back average prices of around 84 isk um, and yeah you can clearly see the one year trend has been down 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 for isogen uh, not even a visible bump probably around here April for the war very slight bump um, so I've been stockpiling isogen I've not been selling and uh, I'm actually willing to risk that I think there's better prices in store for isogen later on uh, then we've got Noxium here as you can see also pretty bad summer back on its average actually climbed up a little bit very interesting 457 in the last uh, or so far today 454 uh, seven, uh, 57 you know a slightly better price than what we used to have uh, but a pretty risky investment considering uh, the beating it's been taken from uh, the mineral rebalance this for me is actually a, an, an extra warning sign um, so if you're not aware of the history of Noxium, more, a bit more than a year ago, probably around here, we had a rebalance of ores in Nalsic. And the result was what, that Noxium was cut in price by more than half. It definitely took an incredible beating. And pretty much the only logical reason for this is that Noxium can easily be mined in vast quantities in both Nalsic, Hysic and Wormhole space. And so the overall supply glut with the addition uh, of a better yield in Nalsic was just too much for Noxium. We had to settle at a new normal. The unfortunate thing is that we could have the exact same result with the Orca and the um, Rorcal boost. Uh, if the Rorcal doesn't keep mining Zydran and Megasite, next in line is probably going to be Noxium. And so this could actually make Noxium even worse because on all fronts, in all spaces, we already have an oversupply and so any increase in yield even from a single space is going to add in my opinion more pressure on noxium doesn't look too good um zydrine is nalsic uh, related for the month we could say starts at 1100 and ends at 1013 is obviously a pretty low point we can also see here on the chart that we are decently low at the tail end here with a decently good summer if these are the summer months i'll quickly do the six month chart so you can actually take a look yeah definitely six month low here once again um which is not great news but this is the this 
final down trade here is the response to the roar call uh, buff basically with its potential incredible yield of 18,400 cubic meters per minute pretty crazy people are expecting them just the same here with uh, with megasite i can quickly show you guys the six month chart of that as well you can see here the sharp drop off uh, of megasite and even at the tail end we're still seeing a pretty sharp drop off to less than 1200 isk median daily price for today and 1315 uh, just a month ago so yeah, doesn't look too good for the Nostic Minerals, which is better for the people like me that have not been investing in this stuff, but have actually been buying it as a means of production for the new engineering complexes. Um, but uh, yeah, you can you can pick this up on the cheap. I actually bought a little bit higher than this, but still in a decent price. I'm actually hoping that especially Isogen might bounce back on maybe a nice winter war or something like that. For those that uh, have OCD like myself, let's quickly add more fight and uh, take a look at that one. Pretty flat over the month, 9,600 isk on average, 9,527 up just a touch. Volumes, not much, not much to say here. Uh, of course, very, very strong. Uh, performance here in May. This was actually the Citadel expansion, uh, but being able to pick up uh, more fight at 9600 is or close to that is probably not bad if you're expecting another war in Nullsec. Uh, a replacement of a few tech 2 fleets could actually boost the amount substantially and uh, these are historically speaking pretty good prices as you can see we are extremely low on the one year chart as well and yeah that's basically what i wanted to uh, to do for this video guys have a, a quick session of if talk with the new market window uh, i like it i think we're gonna go with this unless uh, you guys really say that nope show the animations show the donkey and channel let's show the donkey and channel here honestly on a flat chart you don't see that much uh, maybe this is like individual trades that go as low as that uh, correct me if i'm wrong on this uh, because for the tritanium it looks pretty crazy but maybe for a couple of like individual trades happen here but i don't think if that's the case it's still accurate but i don't think it's it's really very useful information because this tends to be uh, like uh, personal trades between people that that need to just move isk in this way for some reason uh <coughs> rmt <coughs> sorry that's my cold uh but yeah there you go guys uh give me your comments about the new setup uh, let me know what you prefer i think the choices are without or with donkey channel and with or without animation thank you very much for watching guys and as always i'll see you next time